we came up with this idea about two months ago that uh, we want to share some experiences, shared experiences in the hopes of maybe changing the way you think about community a bit in the industry. Yeah, we didn't want to just, well, I didn't want to come here and just do another sales pitch. Well, Bit's an amazing company. Everyone should look into it. Um, you know, we wanted to address some of the downfalls of the community, the importance of it, and actually go into some of the more critical things about what makes a space special. So, um, why don't you start with what, how you got into the industry? Uh, so, I, I got into the industry um, very early. Um, so, I guess you and I can, several others in there can be considered the veterans of the space. Um, and I got in for the right reasons, which was I saw the potential of blockchain and math based currencies and what they can do to trust centers. And um, it's this very forum, the World Blockchain Forum, that brought, uh, brought that special sauce of, of people from all around the world to come face to face. As a matter of fact, just, just five minutes ago, I met, this, I met this guy for the first time, but I, I loved him. And what I mean by that is we've been talking online for several years and we had been very close from a perspective of working on problems on the internet uh, to do with, with humanity. And, and I just got to meet him for the first time uh, backstage. And, and that's the power of this community. Yeah. That is the power of the community. And it was fun because it, three years ago, you're probably talking to him. And it's not a conversation of, could you invest? Can you help us out raise money? It was a conversation of, we're trying to change the world. And you'll listen to him, and he's the next speaker today, uh, doing some amazing humanitarian things. I know that I was very fortunate when I got into the industry that everybody was so receptive and warm to help. When I came up with the idea, I want to make a conference about things, a bunch of people said, yeah, great, that's, how could we help? Right, so let's, let's press that reset button today, where we were back in 2013, 2014, where it wasn't about the dollar at the end of it. it people weren't coming to the conferences looking for money. We were coming to the conferences looking to collaborate and looking to grow. We were coming to share our ideas. We were coming to talk about the innovation in math-based currencies. Yeah. So let's, let's change that paradigm and set it back to what it, really, what it really was. Because in the exodus of this ICO market and shitcoin, uh, sorry, uh, in the exodus of this market, uh, we're, we're, we're really starting to see what happens when people join this community for the wrong reasons. And to be honest with you, if you're in this room looking for 10x, you're in the wrong place. This is, that's not what this represents. This, and I think Nick, Nick said this on stage, Spanos, yesterday, that, that this movement, this, this is a chance for us to actually have something amazing for humanity. And that's what this field represents. And, and that we need to set that back and get back there. Do you remember one of the rants, I think Charles made this rant where he was talking about how the people that are going to be the future of identity, the future of money, the future of innovation, the future of a bunch of things are in this room right now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what's funny about this thing, and I, I think there's a lot of truth to that, and this is a technology that we're all learning to harness. Somebody yesterday said, talking about building a plane as it's flying. It's, we're learning it together, and the people in this room will be shaping the future. This technology is so powerful. And I, I don't think that it's um, antagonistic and it's trying to stop the power of certain things. It's trying to make the world a better place for us all, and I think it has the potential to do that. And I, I think that cliche statement of make the world a better place sometimes gets lost. But in this industry, it's actually happening. We, we have seen yesterday on stage a government fighting for us. We now have homes and governments fighting each other in terms of competitiveness to bring about more innovative legislation that gives us regulatory clarity in the fields where we need it. And if we look at that and we start to consider where can this future go, we start to realize that in this room and in rooms like this, you have a, a melting pot of some of the world's greatest minds. And, and I could look around the room right now and, and I know some brilliant people here. Some of the, I can't, I don't know any other industry that forces you to get on a plane because economic value no longer has a border. And you have no other choice but to be all over the world. And I have never been involved in anything that forces me to fly so goddamn much. I've seen this guy for the year in Dubai, 
in, in Miami, in, in, in four or five different countries, and it doesn't stop. And it's not that I want to see him, because um, I really don't. Uh, it's, it's that you, 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 you move to where these, these centers of minds get together, and, and it's just something that's so attractive, you can't afford to not be there. And I think that's what's pretty powerful about the community. And community is everything, right? The, the community is the thing that will drive people to move forward. When you're standing in line getting a coffee and the person next to you says something or you overhear somebody talk, like, oh, I know a person that can help with that. You've just created a connection that could produce a massive company. Companies that were launched this year, like there was one company, Wanshade, big project. They met four years ago in Miami at the conference, over drinks, said, hey, I think we have this idea. I think it could work. Four years later, they launched something, went up to a billion dollar company. It's amazing. It's amazing what can be done. And, and I, I, think, I think what's important to grasp and, and why we chose to do this here today instead of a sales pitch, I mean, if you've been around the industry for, for a while, uh, you should have a relative success unless you didn't hold over, didn't build a good business behind it. Um, and, and any of us can come and talk about our experiences and our successes. Uh, but I, I, I once again need to harp on how important it is just to get to know the people and, and to build those relationships because at the end of the day, that's what drives everything forward. I think it is a sales pitch. The sales pitch is on community and keeping, trying to stress the importance and to invest in meeting new people. That's the sale, what we're talking about is, it's the industry which I feel is most warm and inclusive and people from all over the world are traveling here, taking long flights like you did, to meet people like-minded. I flew in from Barbados, a little bit away. It's, a, it's incredible that people will prioritize this event and meeting like-minded people over the thousands of other things they can be doing every day. Well, so um, with that being said, you know, one of the other things we wanted to talk about. <laughs> Issues. Uh, one of the other things we. Uh, <clears throat> One of the other things we wanted to talk about was get into some of the real conversations about where this technology is really going, what's really going to happen, uh, where the future lays uh, for most of us and the technologies. Um, I know that we had some more disruptive conversations to be had that might spark a, a little bit controversy, so I think we could... Let's start by talking about what's on everybody's mind, which is the ICO market and what has happened. Well, why, why don't you give your take first and I'll give mine, because I, I think I have a different perspective than you. My take is pretty simple. The ICO market and the, uh, the mechanism that, of funding a company through an ICO remains a very good way to fund a company. I think the valuations are tremendous. I think people are trying to raise too much money too fast to grow, and I don't think there's a secondary mechanism to release money based on performance. That's important to have. Okay, so... People think the ICO market is dead, and I completely disagree with them. The utility and the use of the ICO market, it's now gonna be more towards what it was always meant to be. An ICO is not designed for a company or a security. It's designed for a network, a math-based protocol. How can this thing function in the absence of a CEO or management? That, that layer of hierarchy and We have to start paying attention to the fact that that mechanism is different than the securities market. If you want to go raise money for a hot dog stand, go and do a security. Um, but if, if you're trying to build a network that is decentralized and does not have a man in the middle and does not have a center of trust and does not have the ability to be thwarted or shut down if everyone in the company was hit by a bus, that's, an, that's ideal for an ICO, the utility behind that. And that's what I believe is going to come back as a fundamental. Look at the tokens that raised the most money. Why did we, the community, back those tokens, the real ones? I mean, we, some bad ones, but the real ones that got backed with huge dollars were backed because of their innovation in mathematics. And that's what we're looking for here. That's the truth. If you look at the top 100 coins, the first 30 of them are all protocols with unlimited potential. That's right. That's right. And that's why I fundamentally believe ICOs are not going anywhere. It's just our misuse of them in the 2017 and 2018 period is now going to come back to a correction of 
where we're going to realize that a security is a security and we're going to honor that of the, 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 the frameworks of the regulators. Yeah. Um, and then anything outside of that, that does not fall under the paradigm of a border. Yeah, I think, I think that the security is idea, and I do have a tendency to promote security talking about that I do think is a major part of the future. It allows people to take part in the success of companies. And it, specifically nowadays, it, takes, it, it gives the ability to people to, to take a part of the success of companies in the most disruptive industry in the world. And if it does pay back 5% year on year, that's a pretty good return. If it pays 10%, great, but you're taking part of companies and giving them the ability to run their companies well via a security token offering, which can't be said for many ICOs. Right, so the next question is, where do you see the future of um, banking and central banking with the advent of these digital currencies? Now that we're actually seeing the prophecy come true to I, some extent. I was in a meeting in Dubai with the biggest bank there, one of the biggest banks, not naming names, and sitting around here with the director general and the CEOs and talking about, what does the bank of the future look like? And I said, well, there's not gonna be a bank, there's not gonna be a branch, there's just gonna be people on their phones with wallets interacting with, other, with cryptocurrencies. What they did, instead of taking that to heart, they built a branch with a virtual, ro like a, a robot that says hi, and you can, virtual tellers yeah. in the thing, and a VR experience so you can drive through to an ATM. <laughs> well, um, here's the thing. I, I, don't, I don't think that a lot of um, the authorities have realized as yet what this system of decentralization truly represents and what the future holds for them. And, uh, you know, in 2013 and 2012 and 2010, and it was fun to envision what the world would look like when you start to disrupt these individuals, or these entities. And we look around now uh, in 2018, and it's happening. And we start seeing the trends move forward of where every last center that we know about. Um, and yeah, we're still trying to hold on, and, and some of them are starting to be innovative and in, uh, incorporating the technology. But ultimately, uh, we're changing completely right now. What's happening, I see, so I think the value in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general has a lot to do with what is the value in an international currency, no borders, free money for everybody. There's value there. What it is, who knows? At one point it was 700 billion, now it's 250. But that represents a huge... What I, what I want to say about um, what I'm optimistic about, instead of is with a depressed market now and people working on infrastructure projects and a lot of companies working hard at delivering easy to use versions of this very complicated technology is the steps are being taken to ensure the success of this technology for everyone. Right, which brings us back to the very beginning of this conversation on why we decided to do things a bit differently. Um, once again, it's, it's fun to come up on stage and talk about your business and, and do a great sales pitch and everything. But the critical component is um, uh, begging and asking that the, the newcomers in this space pay attention to that community aspect because that's the real winning formula. You want success, you want to make money, uh, you want to have a worldwide uh, image and brand and company, this, this community is, is how you do it. These guys literally are uh, the, the life of, of the different facets of your of, of what you are going to create. And I can't express how, how successful uh, my company and myself have become from coming to these kind of events and actually listening to people, getting to know them, understanding them, and understanding what drove them into this industry. And if it's for profit, just close off that conversation and move on to the next person. You're going to find someone with a spark of God in this room, and that person is going to want to change the world. And, and that could be your best friend. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to to, to say today and, and to bring to the stage. It's a perfect note to end with. Thank you so much. There's a lot of love on that stage. All right.